Hey everyone, it's Jody from Joderson Art, coming to you from my painting studio, otherwise known as my garage in hell, or otherwise known as Phoenix, Arizona in the summer. Um, I recently put up a painting that I did a tattoo embellishment with. It was a uh, bloom style swipe, and a lot of you guys were asking me how I did it. Well, it's so super simple that I just don't want to gatekeep and I want to show you guys how to really bring your paintings to life. If you have something that you feel like is maybe just missing something, um, you can have a lot of fun with these tattoos. So it's a little bit longer of a video than I normally make, but uh, just hang out with me and we'll get through it today. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, today we're working on a 16 inch round canvas. The first thing I do is level it. And today we're gonna to be working with the temporary tattoos for embellishments. So I'm picking out two here and they're relatively familiar in palettes. And I'm doing this because I wanna have some options after I finish the painting. So I'm actually building my colors around the embellishment. So we're just putting down our pillow. This is Color Place Antique White and Satin. You can get this at Walmart. And I'm gonna put a little extra paint on the canvas today because I'm going to swipe down the middle and then I'm going to tilt it to one side or the other depending on how the swipe turns out. So the first color that we're going to be using today is the tube paint. This is by Amsterdam and that's my consistency. This is Amsterdam Permanent Violet and my pouring medium is always listed in my description. So as you see I'm going to put my paint down right in the middle of the canvas. Up next, we're gonna be using Kiwi. This is a color art pigment. And if you're familiar with my channel, I use this green a lot. I usually don't like greens, but this particular green always brings um, a lot to my paintings. It never over overpowers the painting. Up next, we have another Amsterdam 2 paint. This is turquoise green. Up next, this is a beautiful red color. This is um, another color art pigment. Is your apple rose this is a super fun red and it doesn't take over the painting like a lot of reds do up next is another color art pigment this is mango mamba this is a beautiful orangey gold pigment This is Love You Pink by Color Art. I just had a little bit of uh, this paint left over and I thought it would be fun to put it down.
And then we have Amsterdam Ultramarine Violet. This is another two paint. So I'm gonna be doing a swipe today using a palette knife and I'm gonna break it into three separate sections. The reason why I do that is I feel like when I tilt it to one side, that it gives it a little bit more dimension. And if you're interested in the color art pigments, I do have a discount code for 20% off. It's Joderson321 right here on the screen. Also, if you're enjoying my content, if you could like and subscribe, it'd be much appreciated. So here I'm just loading up the palette knife and we're gonna do our first swipe. And here we have our second swipe. And you'll see I have a little bit too much cell activator on here. And it's gonna give me some ghost cells, but it actually turned out real pretty at the end, so I'm okay with it. And palette knife is all about pressure. Sometimes you push it in a little bit too much and you get some ghost cells, but that's okay. As long as they're structured and they stay together, they can look real fun on your painting. And we're gonna do that last swipe. And even if you leave too much black cell activator on there with the palette knife, you can kind of drag that cell activator through existing color that you already have down on your canvas. Or you could actually use the cell activator as part of your painting. So here I'm just touching it up a little bit And now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to first take it to my spinner and I'm going to open up those cells a little bit and then I'm going to tilt it one way or the other um, depending on which side I prefer better. Now unfortunately I made a terrible mistake when I went to my puppy pool to spin this out. I thought I turned the camera on and I didn't. When I thought I turned the camera off I did get a little bit of footage at the end. Um, so I'm going to show you guys that up next and I apologize for that and I was going to scrap the whole video but since we're really focusing on the embellishment which that part is going to be up next um, you'll be able to see the finished piece and how I embellished it. So you really just need to tilt that paint off to one side. You want to make sure that as you're tilting you're spinning the canvas a little bit as well so that you're covering all your sides. So here we are. This is where I thought that I turned the camera off, um, but I actually just turned it back on. I turned it on again. So this is what the uh, painting looked like after I spun it and tilted it. And so just picking it up and taking a look at it. And I like it. I got all the sides covered that I wanted and we're just keeping it simple here. Simple colors and it doesn't have to be perfect um, as far as where it la lands on the canvas. Um, and that's the beauty of this, as long as you have just about, you know, maybe one quarter of it covered. So we definitely have something to work with here. Hey everyone. So welcome to my mess. This is my garage. This is where I paint. Um, and it's not so bad. I have two kind of cool tables, one that you can have all your paints and stuff in. And it's a little messy back there, but um, my husband was so tired of me making a mess inside the house that he put a splitter in the garage with some air conditioning because living in Arizona, uh, it's a disaster in the summer. It's hot and um, can't really paint out here. So he wanted me to paint somewhere else so badly that he put the air conditioner in here. Anyway, let's go to the painting that we just did. So this is 48 hours later and here is our dried result. 
So it dried nice, didn't lose color, composition. And so yesterday, I mean, or two days ago, when I originally was making this painting, I think I showed you that I actually decided to make the painting around the tattoos, the embellishment. And so I gave myself two chances um, and I picked these two. And to be honest with you, either one of these will work, but because of the yellow and orange in here and purple, and just kind of this looks like more like watercolor, I decided that I'm gonna go with this one. So I'm just gonna do this one in the middle here. I'm not gonna put the two little ones in there, just keeping that simplicity. So let's get this started. Okay, so here we have the painting and I've already cut the tattoo and cut those other two little flowers out. I'm basically just gonna look and position this and you know, I don't want it exactly in the middle. Um, maybe a little higher because we have this part coming out. So it's a little sticky, not too sticky. And I'm just gonna turn this over here and I can actually see through it. I don't know if you guys can, but I can see through it. I wanna make sure that it's kind of straight, maybe a little further over. And I'm just gonna kind of press this down here. Now next, I just use a paper towel and I'm gonna get a lot of water on this. I'm gonna soak this paper towel with water because you need a lot of water. Don't worry about if you get water on your painting, it's okay house paint it's meant to be cleaned what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start and go right down the middle first like this to try to make sure that this sticks now I'm gonna push it with the water straight on. And I'm really gonna press this, even the part where there is no tattoo, because I wanna make sure that it's flattened out. You're really just gonna press this on here. And make sure that it has enough water on it. And hold it relatively still. Just rub it on. You want to make sure that all of it is covered. If you want to little, lose a little piece of the tattoo, because then you have to scrape it off the painting, and that's a pain. So, hmm, a little bit more. So now I'm going to peel this away very slowly. I'm going to start at the top and make sure that it took and I'm going to peel this very, very, very slowly. You don't want to rip it off because if there is a piece that's still stuck to the paper, you do have another opportunity if you see it to press it down with the paper towel again. So just go real slow. That's looking pretty. Patience is key here. And some of the ink came off here. We want to wipe that off right away. There's some ink sometimes on there. Um, it's just the writing. There's a little here too. That's an easy cleanup. Sorry for this light here. See if we can fix it. Yep. Here we go. Hold on one second. 
me show you. Let's see if you can see this. Hold on, let me play with the camera. And there we go. It's just like this. And it's that simple. It's just that simple. And this adds a lot of beauty. Um, I almost feel guilty doing this because I'm, I can't draw stick people. It's bad. Um, so this really just picks up the painting and, you know, adds a lot to it. And, you know, don't feel bad about embellishing your, your paintings. Some people say they feel like it's cheating. It's not cheating, right? It's art. We call it mixed media. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we put a coat of resin on this. I don't trust the varnish because this is so delicate that this could get worn away super quickly. So um, I recommend putting at least one or two coats of resin on here. You see how pretty it is? Yeah. That simple, guys. So I hope you enjoyed my video today. Um, have fun with whatever you guys do. Painting is great. Uh, we're here. It's a learning community. It's important that we share ideas. Um, no gatekeeping.